Hey. Hey, Glenn. What's happening? Oh, you know, it's, you know, I'm uh, sitting here in the snow. It's melting away. Yeah. How are I'm you? I'm waiting old? for a call from Jennifer, so don't be surprised if I have to leave in a hurry. Okay. I understand. Wow. Um, speaking of Jennifer, you know, I started uh, like a week ago. Like a week ago, last week, I started researching, you know, all that stuff that that Jennifer was involved in, and and it's wow, it really is like a pretty sadistic type of science of of of, of that type of uh, mind control. Yeah. And she, 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 and I was thinking about it, like the books I was the book I was reading on it. I was like, wow, Jennifer, she, she was. Uh, it's really strong to be able to go through that because those people, that's like, I, I don't even think, I don't know if I could handle something like that. That's something like, I don't know if I'd ever be able to come back from that. Well, they made MK Ultra illegal in the U.S. and had to move to Montreal to mm-hmm. complete the program, so. I don't know, it makes me wonder, like, when I think about, like, because the, these, these, Type of things they do these this MKOs and stuff. Uh, another program they called it was uh, Project Monarch or something. It's, it's they they do these things from like a very early age, like drawn out. Yeah. Do these type of things, and I don't know. I could see that. Like um, I think it's it's not just the Navy; it's the Army involved. You know. Well, the Navy is the one that has the archives. They gather all the information because they've been around longer than anybody else. Mm-hmm. In uh, ancient history, you couldn't march around the world. You had to pretty well fight in your own neighborhood until ships began to take people to different parts of the world. And so the Navy is responsible for that kind of stuff. Uh, And they now, of course, have been given the new ocean of the world, which is outer space. Yeah. So this this, this type of... uh, that, That type of mind control. I realize, too, when I think about all the other stuff I've looked at, like they've been doing this type of thing for thousands of years. Like that's why now I know why they used to have those rituals, and they would always be some type of drug or some type of sacrifice. I mean, yeah. part, part of it was you know to disassociate and use it to control uh, people. Yeah, and it's, I guess it's not, not that. intended only for the person going through it, mm-hmm. but to uh, uh, scare all the other people who knew that it was happening. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I, I, I just heard, too, um, there was an earthquake the day before yesterday in Alaska, 7.1. Yeah, that's a fairly big one. Yeah. So... Um, I've never heard of uh, earthquakes in Alaska. That's not something that's common, right? Well, they they have their share, especially in the area that links Alaska to Asia. Mm. Okay. So um, don't forget, all mountains were created by earthquakes. I'm, I'm sure there's natural forming ones, and there's probably uh, uh, <laughs> artificial or artificially induced uh, yeah. mountains. Well, blind thrust yeah. is uh, basically the project, and the code word they use for it is magnetohydraulic dynamics. That that 
pressure from down below um, is what broke the bridge. I don't know if you heard about the new bridge they installed north of Lake Superior, and it was only open for a month, and all of a sudden, one half raised up a couple of feet, had broken something like uh, uh, 60 bolts that held the thing together, and a couple of trucks didn't stop in time, fell over. But for a while, there was no traffic going in Canada from east to west because that's the only bridge they had, and they had just opened a new one. I don't know what they did with the old one, but obviously it wasn't there anymore. Now, they had done something similar in Minnesota a couple of years ago, and a highway uh, was lifted and moved over uh, some kind of, of overpass type of thing and moved over 30 feet. And I suspect that those are all tests to make sure that when they do the loo at the Sioux, they're at the right place. So the, the one in Minnesota is beyond Lake Superior. This one was just north of Lake Superior, halfway down the lake. So the next one would be at the southern end of Lake Superior, and they got to make sure that they get it at the right place or they'll only get half a job done and and the water may not all run out. Now, like, they have, like, different systems because with this Lua to Sioux, it, it can, it's only powerful enough but for, like, the east coast, basically, of America, right? And they have something else. Well, what you have is the largest uh pink or red stone, uh, which is basically granite and quartz um, underneath the, uh, the peninsula. So by uh, heating one, the inside one, until it expands, and and it's being held tight by the granite, at one point it explodes. I got all kinds of samples here from under the house. When they when it explodes, of course, it pushes upwards and creates kind of a a space where the rock was so with the weight of the pa- of the water pushing on one side of the peninsula and the peninsula no longer being solid there's a collapse that occurs here we began to notice um after 9/11 not 9/11 after 2011 uh, after you guys came, uh, I guess they were pissed off because we had talked about it and they had to put off the Lou at the Sioux for another day. Uh, and they began to work on this place, which I believe is a testing ground. They had purposely positioned rocks, purposely directed water, purposely uh, made sure those rocks were what they call living stones, as in Jonathan Livingstone Seagull. And those living stones is basically the... uh, 
the process through which life begins. It's the elements that are gathered in these stones break out and come together and create new life. So these living stones started to explode in 2012 during the winter after you guys left. To, you you guys were here in November, and it was after that that it began. We could hear the equivalent of a an explosion underneath the house. And then you see doors that don't shut properly, uh, glass that explodes, all kinds of things like that. And most of it was happening under Tom's room on the ground floor. And I kept going in there, and and he pretended he had made the noise. He didn't want me to understand that it was coming from underground for some reason. That's strange. He was uh, an admitted informant to the Ontario Provincial Police, and he was reporting back to them on what we were doing here and getting instructions from them. And I went to the police in uh, 2006, 2007 to tell them, and the sergeant said he already knew. He knew what was going on. He knew about isostasy. He knew about the Lou at the Sioux. And he didn't care that it would basically take out their headquarters in Aurelia as uh, one of the first things that would happen, water would gush into Georgian Bay and onto land, and Aurelia Lake Simcoe area would be one of the first places hit in Canada. And he didn't care. Why? How come you think he didn't care? Because he wouldn't be the one. He wanted. He wanted all his bosses to go down, <laughs> so that he could be the top dog. He was only a sergeant. <laughs> so when it happens, and it, you know, everything is has been set up for it to happen. You have uh, more snow on the East Coast that's going to melt and help liquefaction occur once the water comes from the Great Lakes. Everything's in place. The, The weather is right for it. They've held back water in the West. Uh, that they can let go at any time from around Winnipeg. How's that that, that flooding uh, in um, Missouri? Is that um, I haven't seen any updates on that because I cause I did notice you know there was flooding in Missouri. Uh, the whole western United States that Jennifer traveled through to get to Ogdensburg from California, she said everywhere she went off the roads you'd look and there were fields covered in water. So that would be North and South Dakota and then you know Minnesota, Illinois, uh, Ohio. Oh, by the way too, I was thinking um about when you were telling me um you know before when Jenny was at the border previously and uh, them waking her up in the middle of the night, I realized that that's part of what they do when they um with that that uh whatever you want to call it, MK Ultra. A lot of what they do is to make people 
you know, deprive them of food. Yeah. Deprive, deprive them of light, deprive them of food, deprive them of heat, or put too much heat. Yeah, and I, I, I was kind of worried about her, you know, like, I, like they, they, I didn't want them. I'm just worried that they'll try to do that type of activity against her, because that's. Sixty-year-old woman put in a a. a what do they call those trucks the cops run around with when they pick up people? I, I know it's usually... Paddy wagons. And and they were doing it on purpose, driving through country roads rather than highways and shaking from side to side. And it was August when they first put her in there, and it was hot, and they turned on the heater. Mm. All that kind of stuff. Uh, there's the phone. Okay, okay. got to go. All right.